Why am I sitting down taking a break? It's because I'm about to talk about ball flight. And let me tell you what, ball flight is a subject I'm not looking forward to because it's so complex. And for the longest time, we tried to figure out how do we put this into a perspective where all players could understand it, even young players. But there's a lot of science involved with it, and we had to figure out a way to make you grasp this concept. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, here we go. Ball flight. The first thing you need to understand is that there are only three things that can change the flight of a ball. That's it. There's nothing else. We looked at all the research that was out there. We conducted our own research, and this is what we found. Three main causes that will have an effect on the ball to change it. Now, I'm not talking about spin. I'm not talking about an underspin or an overspin that will cause the ball because of pressure. I'm talking about the simple ball flight. Three things, that's it. Understand these three things and you will be able to apply them to almost every kick that you have. Number one is the angle of the impacting object. Think about this like you would different golf clubs. The more upward angle on a golf club, the higher the ball will go. If the ball is struck with a flat object, the ball will go straight. If the ball is struck with an object facing upward, the ball will go up, much like a pitching wedge in golf. If the ball is struck with a downward facing object, the ball will go down. Second is the center or off center impact. If the ball is struck in the center, the ball will go straight. If the ball is struck at the bottom, the ball will deflect up, much like a pot fly in baseball. If the ball is struck above center, the ball will deflect down. Number three, swing angle. If the ball is struck in the center of the swing circle, the swing angle will be neutral or flat and the ball will go straight. If we catch the ball on an upward swing angle, the ball will follow this path and travel upwards. If the ball is struck on a downward swing angle, the ball will follow and travel downward. Now this is where you can get a little confused. We're going to watch Mac do a chip shot. At first, it appears the ball is going to be struck with a downward angle. However, if you look closely, you'll notice that his foot creates a wedge shape which contacts the bottom of the ball. This causes the ball to rise quickly. Understanding a swing path. The normal kick is a circular motion. So when we come in, there's a circular motion. Our leg is swinging in a circle. That's a normal kick. Everyone does it for the most part. When they kick, there's a big circle going on. If I put a ball in front of this, you'll notice that if I put my plant foot right next to the ball, what happens to my swing circle? It's right in the middle. It's perfect. I'm hitting the ball right at the straight point. The ball is going to go pretty much low. However, if I move my plant foot back just about that much, what happens? I'm catching it on the upward arc. You'll notice the upward arc. Therefore, the ball is going to go higher. If I move forward and I catch it here, now what has happened? Now you can see that I'm on the downward arc. That's what's going to cause. Moving your plant foot has an effect on your ball trajectory. Now we're going to talk about swing path manipulation. Sounds great, doesn't it? So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to manipulate this circle and change the shape of it. Normally, if I was to strike the ball here, I would come in, have a circular motion. If I want to change that motion and I want the ball strike to make sure that that ball goes low, what do I have to do? I have to get rid of the upward arch. So I can simply release. Now what I want to do is I want to have the regular downswing, but I want to have that foot extend out rather than come up. Again, I'm going from round motion, round circular. Now what I want to do is I want to come in and almost like a step through. I want to exaggerate. The thigh and the knee are going to flatten out that after swing. So I come normal and I let it go through let my thigh and knee go low and straight 
and exaggerate. Now I'm going to show you how this applies to other sports as well. I'm going to use the example of golf. Grab my trusty little golf club here. The average golf swing is a round circle. So let me show you. The average golf swing, circle, this is a golf swing. It's a big circle. Now, I'm on a golf course and I have a bunch of limbs in front of me and I have to push that ball low. How do you do that? You do your normal backswing, but as you come through, you allow your hands to carry through to the shot and that flattens out your swing. The ball will go low because there's no upward arc. It will exaggerate the low shot. So normal round swing. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to exaggerate and flatten it. Same thing in a soccer kick. Start round, flat. Round, upward motion. Now, if you think about it too, if you want to hit a golf ball high, the same thing applies. Normally, you're going to hit a golf ball right in the center of your swing. If you want to get a little higher on it, like a driver, where do you put that golf ball? You move it to your front foot. Why? Because you'll be catching it on the upswing. Same thing applies to the soccer kit. Enough of the golf ball. Let's get back to the soccer kick. So, the motion, a normal motion, round swing, that's a normal soccer kick. I want to go in low. I exaggerate my forward motion, allow my thigh and knee to go forward. Come in, that's a low shot. Round, knee goes up. Low, exaggerated. If I really want the ball to go high, I can combine these things. I can just step a little bit behind the ball. I can hit the bottom of the ball and exaggerate my thigh and knee flight. If I do all three of those, I strike the ball and allow my knee and leg to go way high. Guess what? The ball is going to go way high. Now here's something that I want you to stay away from. I always hear that if you want to get a ball high, all you have to do is just lean back. What happens when you lean back? If you lean back, you shut down your hips. As you try and kick, you can't get a good rotation and you lose a lot of power. You don't have to do that. Always stay upright. Use the other, the other adjustments that we're talking about. Strike at the bottom of the ball and manipulate your swing or your swing path by allowing your leg to create the shape you want. So if you want the ball to go high, round. Allow the leg to go up and follow the ball. Low, keep it low, let that ball go low. Volley kick, we stress this all the time in volley kicks. You have to kick volley kicks low. 71% of volley kicks and finishing kicks on a moving bouncing ball go over the net. That's where they end up. But if people would learn, how to manipulate that swing arc instead of kicking a volley kick like this, which is going to be on the upward motion, have the step through. The exaggerated step through that changes that swing arc from round and up to forward. It's a forward motion. Now I'm going to do two shots for you and show you how this works. I'm going to show you two kicks. I'm going to show you a high kick and a low kick without leaning back. That was a high kick. Now let's go to a low kick. With my low kick, I'm going to exaggerate. I'm going to flatten out. I'm going to allow my leg to go straighter towards the target. Now, let's take a look at a youth player trying this same principle and see if he can make it work. Notice the swing angle of the leg and relative ball flight.
Now, let's look at what happens to the swing angle when Dan leans back and forward. Notice that with a very slight lean radar within you, every human being has a natural sense within them. It's the ability to know where you are and your surroundings without having to see it. Great reactionary shooters work on this ability and become comfortable with it. It allows them to shoot quickly and without hesitation. The extra time it takes to visually confirm your target gives both keepers and defenders time to react and prepare. Watch the following clips and you'll notice one thing in common. The eyes of the shooter never leave the ball. They constantly stay on the ball and they rely on their natural radar. In the Advancing Player Training section, we show you how to develop this natural skill. Music